Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to be going over Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. So let's get into this. So first thing I want to talk about is what a Bronsted Lowry acid and a Bronsted Lowry base is. Now when we're talking about the Arrhenius definition of an acid or base, we're talking about in, the, in that context that those would be substances, for example, an Arrhenius acid is a substance that when you throw it in water, it's going to produce H3O plus or, or hydronium ions in water. So, uh, but if it's, a, if it's a substance that when you throw it in water, it produces uh, OH minus or hydro, uh, hydroxide ions, then it's going to be an Arrhenius base. Now, for the bronsted lowry definition of an acid and base, we're going to focus on what is called the proton. And in this case, what a proton is, uh, is just basically an H plus ion. So we call it a proton because if you think of a hydrogen atom, your typical hydrogen atom is going to have one proton in the nucleus and one electron uh, orbiting around the uh, the nucleus <clears throat> and I use orbit in quotes because of course it's not orbiting it's in a it's in an orbital uh, but it's outside the nucleus so it only has one electron so uh, when you remove that one electron uh, basically you just have the proton left so H plus with the is basically the hydrogen atom with the electron removed and so it's just a proton. So we refer to H plus ions or hydride ions, or no, I'm sorry, not hydride ions, uh, hydrogen ions as uh, protons, because that's literally what they are. It's just a proton. So for a bronsted lowry acid or an acid, according to the bronsted lowry definition, is basically anything that it donates a proton or H plus. And a bronsted lowry base is going to be anything that accepts or takes an H plus or a proton. And so that is what we mean or what we're going to mean by an acid or a base according to the bronsted lowry definitions. Okay, so uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is to talk about this relationship between acids and bases and what is called their conjugates. So a conjugate acid-base pair is basically those two things that are going to be related by the difference in a hydrogen because the H plus or proton donor is going to donate a hydrogen to something else and that's going to produce its conjugate, which is going to be a conjugate uh, base or conjugate acid. So what do I mean by this? So let's, uh, let's look at an example and I think it'll be a, a bit clearer. So here, if we look at this example here, we have ammonia NH3 reacting with acetic acid. This is HC2H3O2. This is acetic acid. This is a weak acid. And so this is going to react with this. And what do you get as products? So you get NH4 plus. Well, how did you get the NH4 plus? Well, NH3 had to gain a proton, it had to gain a hydrogen. Well, where did that hydrogen come from? It came from this hydrogen here. Well, how do I know it came from this hydrogen here? Well, if we look over here, and I forgot to put the negative signs for my acetate ion. So if you look over here, the H is gone. The H is missing from HC2H3O2. So the uh, acetic acid gave its hydrogen away to the NH3. So this hydrogen here is transferred to this right there. So that's what's happening with the uh, transfer of the hydrogen, the proton donor acceptor. So here, this hydrogen here is donated to the NH3. So that makes this, since uh, by definition, 
the bronchylary acid is the proton donor. It's what's donating the proton. So then this is the proton donor. This is the proton acceptor, the H plus acceptor. So this is going to be the Bronsted-Lowry base. And then that makes the acetic acid the Bronsted-Lowry acid. So we have the Bronsted-Lowry base that accepts a proton or a H plus from the acetic acid, which is the Bronsted-Lowry acid. And in doing so, in this process, we form ammonium ion, NH4 plus, and then we have the acetate ion, C2H3O2 minus. Okay, so now I was talking about conjugate acid and conjugate base. Well, how do we figure out what the conjugate acid is or the conjugate base is? Well, that has to do with the fact that this is a reversible reaction. We have this double arrow here. And then that means that this can go this way. What that means is this ammonium ion can donate back to the acetic acid the hydrogen. So the hydrogen can be transferred, right? One of the hydrogens here can be transferred back to the acetic acid, and it can go this way, reproducing the acetic acid here and the ammonia. So in that case, if it was to go backwards, Ammonium ion would be behaving like the proton donor and therefore the Bronsted-Lowry acid. And the acetate ion would be accepting the H plus acting as a Bronsted-Lowry base. Oops. Sorry about that. So in going this way, these can act as acids and bases going in the reverse direction. So we don't call them acids and bases. We call them conjugate acids and bases. So here, since the acetate ion here is accepting the proton from ammonium, it's a base, but we call it the conjugate base. So this here is the conjugate base. And since the ammonium ion is giving the proton or H plus two acetate, it's donating that. So that's going to be the uh, conjugate acid. <clears throat> okay, so so how do I determine the acid-base pair, the conjugate acid-base pair? Well, the conjugate acid-base pair is related to each other by the loss or gain of a proton or H+. So here, this is the base, ammonia. What is the conjugate acid to this base? Well, it's the NH4 plus ion. It's the ammonium ion. How do I know that? Well, this can lose the H and regain or reform the NH3, the ammonia. So notice that NH3, NH4 plus differ by only one hydrogen. So that indicates that we have, this is the base this is the conjugate acid of this base. So we can do the same thing here. This is the acid. And so the conjugate base of this acid is the acetate ion, the C2H3O2 minus. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see that they differ by, again, an H. So this has no H. This has 
one H. I mean, when I, I'm talking about the acidic hydrogen. So the acidic hydrogen here is lost to form the ion here. And then if you gain a hydrogen here again, you reform the acid. So this is your conjugate acid, uh, your, your acid and conjugate base pair. So that's how you can determine what the base and its conjugate acid or what the acid and its conjugate base are. And so let me also at this point uh, clarify something with regard to acid base and, its, and their conjugates. So the, these are the reactants. And so the reactants are referred to as the acid or the base. These are the products. Remember, products are always on the right side of the arrow. Reactants are always on the left side of the arrow. The reactants are always going to be labeled as acid or base. These are never going to be labeled as conjugates. The conjugates are always on the product side. So these are never going to be labeled as merely the Bronsted-Lowry acid, the Bronsted-Lowry base. These are not going to be labeled as acid and base. They're going to be labeled as the conjugate acid, conjugate base. So on this side of the arrow, these are where the conjugates are. This is where you're going to identify what the conjugates are. On this side of the arrow, you're going to identify what the acid and base are, the Bronsted-Lowry acid and base are. So make sure you don't confuse it. Um, don't, don't mark this as conjugate acid and base, and don't mark this as just the acid and base. This is not the Lowry acid and base. These are the conjugates. These are the acid and bases. Okay, so let's go ahead and do another one. So here you have water, and again, we have acetic acid. And then on the product side, we have H3O plus and we have the acid ion. So this lost the hydrogen here, right? So where did it lose the hydrogen? It lost it to the water. The water picked up the H plus and formed the hydronium ion. So water in this case is behaving like a Bronsted-Lowry base. It's picking up the hydrogen. So this is going to be the Bronsted-Lowry base. And so <clears throat> this then is the Bronsted-Lowry acid. So the acetic acid is donating a proton or H plus to water. Water is accepting that proton. So water is acting as the Bronsted-Lowry base. Acetic acid is behaving like the Bronsted-Lowry acid. Now the conjugate acid and base, right? So if we look at the conjugate uh, of the water, right? So here you have water. Well, it's picking up hydrogen. So remember, its conjugate is going to differ from water by one hydrogen. If we come over here, we have H3O+, plus, which is formed from water picking up the hydrogen. So what is formed from the water? It's formed H3O+. Plus. So then the H3O+, plus is the conjugate acid. So I put Ca right? And it's an acid, it's a conjugate acid, because if you go backwards, the uh, hydronium ion will lose the hydrogen. It will donate that hydrogen back to the acetic, uh, the uh, acetate ion and reform the water. So these two are connected to each other by the transfer of a hydrogen between them. So this one and this one uh, are created or are related to each other by the transfer of a hydrogen be between water and hydronium. So this is this is uh, uh, how they're connected. And again, same thing with the acetate ion. Oh, I'm sorry, the acetic acid and the acid ion is that this is the Bronsted-Lowry acid. So the base, the conjugate base, is going to be the ion here. And again, the key here is to understand that the 
connection between this one and this one is the transfer of a hydrogen between them. So here you have, this has the hydrogen, it transfer the hydrogen, and then you end up with this. So the difference between this one and this one is the loss or gain of a hydrogen. So this is the acid, this is its conjugate base. This is the base, this is the conjugate acid. Okay, I hope this is, I hope this is getting clear. Okay, let's go to the next one. So here I have ammonia again, so just like up here, and here I have water. So here, uh, it's interesting because in this case, uh, if I look at the two reactants and I look at the two products, you'll see that the NH3 picked up an H plus to form the ammonium ion. So where did it get that H plus from? It got it from the water. So water in this case is donating uh, H plus to the ammonia. So ammonia is the base in this case. So the Bronsted-Lowry base is the ammonia in this case. And in this case, water is the Bronsted-Lowry acid. Because water donated one of its hydrogen to the ammonia to form ammonium and the hydroxide ion, which is left. Okay, so conjugates then. So remember, the conjugate of the base is going to be related by the loss or gain of a, of a proton. So in this case, since it's a base, it's going to gain a proton. So what do, you, what do you get when you gain a proton? You get NH4+. plus. So this is its conjugate acid. So the conjugate acid is the ammonium ion. And again, if you go backwards, if you go in the reverse direction, then ammonium ion will transfer a hydrogen to the hydroxide. That's going to give you back your ammonia, and the water will get back by from the hydroxide. So this is the base. This is its conjugate acid. You can see that they differ by one proton. Okay, so next we have the acid here. Its conjugate base is going to be the hydroxide ion. Nope, that should be a B, not an A. This is going to be the conjugate base. Okay. Oops, I have the wrong, I have the wrong colors here. This should be blue. Sorry about that. So this is CA. Let's be consistent. I'm making acids blue and bases red. Although that's different from what you would expect with using pH paper. So sorry if that's confusing. Okay, so. Now that we got that done, let's go to the next one. Now, the uh, one thing I want to, uh, well, here, I'll point that out in the next one as well. So here I have water reacting with water. This is called the auto-ionization of water. So here I have one water molecule. Here's another water molecule. This water molecule is going to donate a proton to this water molecule or vice versa, right? So it seems that this water molecule is actually going to donate it to this one. So in this case, just to make it clear, uh, so one of the hydrogens here is going to be donated to that water molecule. And so you get H3O+, plus, which is the hydronium ion. So if this is donating to this one, then this is the Bronsted-Lowry acid. So... We're going to label this one Bronsted-Lowry acid. And then since this is accepting the proton, or H+, this is going to be the Bronsted-Lowry base. 
So since this water is accepting the proton, then it's going to form its conjugate acid, which is H3O plus. So this is the conjugate acid. And since this water molecule is donating a proton to this water, this water molecule is going to form its conjugate base, which is the OH minus. So this is going to be conjugate base. So again, the base is related to the conjugate acid by a proton. So this is H2O, H3O. And then the acid is going to be related to its conjugate base by uh, one proton. So this is H2O, this is OH. So they differ by one proton. This has one hydrogen, this has two hydrogens. This has two hydrogens, this has three hydrogens. So they differ by one hydrogen between them. Okay, so these three are showing that water, water can act as an acid or a base, a Bronsted-Lowry acid or base, depending on the context, right? So in this context, water is behaving like a Bronsted-Lowry base by accepting hydrogen from acetic acid. In this example, water is uh, behaving like a Bronsted-Lowry acid because it's donating a hydrogen to the ammonia to form ammonium and hydroxide ion. And here you have them both in the same reaction acting as an acid or a base. So water, depending on uh, what context can act as an, a Bronsted-Lowry acid or a Bronsted-Lowry base. And what we've, those kind of substances that can act as an acid or a base, depending on the context, but then, depending on the reaction, we call these amphoteric substance, substances. So here I have a list, a very short list, right? There's other examples, but here's a few examples of what an amphoteric substance is. Are. So water, as we saw, is an amphoteric substance. It can act as an acid or a base, depending on the context. And then uh, H2O, uh, H2PO4 minus, this can act as an acid or a base. And HCO3 minus hydrogen carbonate ion, this is uh, by, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the dihydrogen phosphate ion. So those are also amphoteric. So let's go ahead and look at a couple more examples here. So H2PO4 minus can react with the acetic acid to form H3 for, uh, H3PO4. So here, um, in this case, we're forming the acetate ion. Well, that means that the acetic acid lost a proton, right? Lost a hydrogen, so it's donating that hydrogen to h 2PO4. So in that case, this is acting as the base. It's, it's, it's accepting a proton from the acetic acid. So this is our Bronsted-Lowry base. And then the conjugate acid of this is going to be H3PO4. So this is our conjugate acid because this gained a proton to form this. This is going to lose a proton to reform this. So they're connected by a loss or gain of one proton or H+. Then for this one, this is our acid. This is going to be the Bronsted-Lowry acid because it is donating this acidic hydrogen to this substance here. So then by donating its hydrogen, it's going to lose that and it's going to form its conjugate base. So this is going to form the acetate ion. So here we have our conjugate base. <clears throat> so in this case, in this context, in this reaction, H2PO4 minus is behaving like a Bronsted-Lowry base. But what about here? We have the same ion, H2PO4, the dihydrogen phosphate ion, 
So this is now going to react with the hydroxide ion. In this case, it's going to donate a proton or hydrogen H plus to the hydroxide ion. So then this is going to be the Bronsted-Lowry acid. So here, Bronsted-Lowry acid, and it's going to donate a it's going to donate a proton to the OH minus. So that makes this the Bronsted-Lowry base. So here we have the Bronsted-Lowry base. And so here, the Bronsted-Lowry acid is going to give rise to its conjugate. So it's going to donate a proton. So it's going to then form this. So this is the conjugate, uh, the conjugate base. So here we have the conjugate base. And again, they are related to each other by one proton. So this has one hydrogen. This has two, right? And so this hydroxide, this base, is going to give rise to water. So water is the conjugate acid in this case. And so we form the water from the hydroxide when it gains a hydrogen. And again, water can then reform the hydroxide by losing a hydrogen going backwards. So that is how you can identify your Lewis acid and base and their conjugate acids and bases. So I hope this was helpful. If this was helpful, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything from this video, then please, by all means, like the video, share the video with family and friends. Uh, make sure you hit that like button. Also subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. When you do hit that notification bell, make sure you click all so you can be notified by all the videos I put out. And finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. If you have a, uh, a particular topic you want me to cover or if you have a particular question or problem you want me to help you with, then please put that down below. I would love to help you with that. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.